this is Russ. Yeah, I'm coming out of Bussy Woods. Yeah, yesterday's ride, which is of course the same day for me. Non-eventful. Non-eventful at Bussy Woods. Had nobody come up to say anything to me. Uh, in reality, not a whole lot of people out there today. Kind of surprising. Let me adjust these mirrors. It's always tough doing these mirrors. I always do at a slight angle. And uh, so I want to be able to see what's behind me, but I also want to see a little bit of the, uh, the street itself too. So it's always a little bit of an adjustment. So uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been keeping a pedal assist level of three, which is about 52%, I think, for my settings. 52% of uh, pedal assist. And um, when I have been throttling, I've been trying to maintain that same wattage of what the 52% would have gave me anyways. To find out how far we're gonna go on this new battery, so right now I'm at 62%, trip is about 20.5 miles. So overall, um, I should do over 40 miles, which is what I expect to get at least. Uh, now the last time we did this, like I said, we hit 42 miles. So. Now that I'm done with the Bussy Woods thing, I figure I'm just going to ride around the neighborhoods around here, see what's out in this general area. I think we're in, uh, this is called Rolling Meadows now. And not too far from where we go get the Chinese food. <laughs> it's too early in the morning, otherwise I'd probably get it. But I also was thinking too, if I was to get the Chinese food, where would I put it? I usually use the front basket. Can't do that now because, uh, can't do that now because I've got my tools there. Now the tool bag used to be in the back, but I have the, the second battery sitting in the back rack now. So I kept thinking about this and I'm thinking, Maybe it's better to get standard panniers like I did uh, on the other ones. Panniers, panniers, panniers. <laughs> Hard to pronounce. Because then the top would be flat, but then the two sides would have the bags. If I ordered the same exact bag as I'd have on my Rad Rover, I could just simply not put the top bag on. That would still open me up to be able to put the rear, um, the second battery on the rear rack. But then this whole front basket would be wide open. I may have to do that. <laughs> because uh, I may end up riding this bike a lot more than the Rad Rover now that we have the two batteries. Or, <laughs> or I just swap out what I have on my Rad Rover, put it on this bike instead. That doesn't work quite well either. I think I would need to order a second one. The reason is because if I decide to do the long ride to the Botanic Gardens, I need both batteries, both triangle batteries. And the only way to really secure that thing is with the panniers that I have now because I can strap on that uh, that second battery gets clipped on because it has its own little bag on the top, fits that that triangle battery, and I just clip it on there. Then I then I use the bungee cords on top of it. I think I if I do the panniers, I'm gonna have to do a second one. I'm gonna have to buy a second one for this bike, and uh, I've been holding off because it, you know it costs money. Do I really need to do it? I keep thinking you know I I can get away with it. Um, but yeah, if I if I want to pick things up, 
I've essentially lost my front basket because it's holding the uh, the tool bag now. Ah, uh, what a dilemma, huh? <laughs> not that those are that expensive. I think I think that one was about forty dollars, something like that. It's not that bad. Now this this turns into panniers too, but the thing is, is that the bag would still be there, and I, I then wouldn't be able to strap the uh, second battery on top of that. It has to be a flat top, which um, that other one would be if I took their uh, their top bag part off. Yep, looks like I may have to do it. <laughs> and if I have to do it. It's gonna look uh, it's gonna look loaded down again but I I don't go anywhere without my tools I have to have my tools with me you know the ocelot pro would eventually be coming in I don't think I would be taking that bike out to do the things I'm doing with, with this bike so uh, I could use this bag on that but I still would like to have a front basket <laughs> I think I'll ask magic cycle for another basket I think I think I really need them uh, to do the things that I do, and um, of course, as I ride their bikes, it highlights their bikes as well. Of course, so yeah, it's worth it for them to give it to me. I guess <laughs> I just I just feel bad asking for stuff that uh, you know it's it's like asking for extra things that they don't really need to give it to you, but if you ask for it, they probably will. But I still feel guilty about it. It's just me. Some people don't feel guilty about anything. They'll just ask for everything. <laughs> I know so there's there's some reviewers, they've asked for two bikes and they've given them two bikes. I, I've never done that. You know, one for them, one for their wife or something. I've, I've seen a reviewer do that, but I never saw the wife riding it. Of course, I don't watch their videos all the time. I just happened to run across it and he mentioned that they gave them two bikes, two of the same bike. I goes, wow, wow. They didn't do that for me, <laughs> but they are giving me a bunch of other bikes. They're giving me new bikes uh, that are coming out, so can't complain really, right? Yeah, I'm just lucky that they're giving me anything. That's, that's how you have to look at it. You're lucky that you get what you get. It's true. So we're at 54%, 21.9 miles. Now based on that, I'm going to guess we're going to end up with about the same 42 miles before this battery dies out. Which is kind of surprising since I wasn't really uh, throttling um, the way I did when I did the first time I checked this battery out. I, I, ro I rode it pretty hard uh, on some of the, the busier streets. Alright, what is this street here? <laughs> You know, I'm just riding for the sake of riding at this point. I don't know where I'm really at. I figure I could always GPS it uh, to get back home. Oh, this is Centro again. All right, do we want to take Centro? I guess we got no choice. Um, where should we take Centro to? Don't know. Just take it and see where it goes. Eventually, I'm going to have to head to the left. Okay. I think we're heading in the wrong direction here. Yeah, we're not heading in the right direction. We're heading in the direction of... Alright, we're going to turn off here. We're heading back into the direction, heading towards Bussy Woods again. <laughs> We're not going to do that. How did we end up doing that? So yeah, I'm just riding for the sake of riding at this point. I, uh, I have no clue where I'm at. I've never ridden these, uh, these streets before. Well, you know, like I said, uh, you get to see different neighborhoods if you do what you do. Let's go forward. I do have a second battery, so I don't worry about it. That's the whole point of the second battery. Range anxiety is uh, diminished. You can explore. 
that's that's I think that's the fun part of the e-bike for me it really is I get to explore areas I've never been to before I wouldn't do this on a car I wouldn't be riding up and down people's neighborhoods on a car but I'll do that on a bike just to see what's out there run into schools. I'm assuming this is a school off to this side. It looks like a big enough building. It could be a school. <laughs> um, I don't know which school it is. If it is, it doesn't have a sign. Here's an interesting thing. If you take a look at this street, they fixed this road, they fixed that part, but they left the center. Okay, I know that they're trying to save on asphalt, but that, that really looks weird. It's been striped. Eventually, it'll even itself back out, but you know, you sometimes wonder, why don't they just do the whole thing? <laughs> okay, now this would be a this has the same thing. It's black here, black there, but it's wider, so that's kind of understandable. But that other one, yeah, they, sh they should have just done it. See, dogs are inside the house. They see me. They still want to get me. How do you like that? Always barking at you. Take, uh, let's take this road. Yeah, it's it's just an easy day. It's an easy day, ride easy. See, now like this fence here, take a look at this one here. That's a white fence, but that's an expensive white fence. <laughs> We don't have that. Yeah, fencing is not cheap. We we asked uh, around, tried to find out what it would cost just to replace our fence rather than paint it. And we were getting some really high quotes. It wasn't it wasn't worth it. Our our fence wasn't that bad. <laughs> so we said, let's just paint it. We painted it, it looks just as good. I mean, it's not totally falling apart, so decided to repaint the fence, painted it white this time. And the only reason we did that is because surrounding fences around us are white. So we, uh, we figured, well, to stay uh, similar to the rest of the neighborhood, we figured we'd better paint it white. Okay, eventually we will have to turn on the GPS, <laughs> find out how to how to head home. Forty nine percent, twenty three point three. Again, like I said, if I uh, had put this down to a pedal assist level that only had maybe let's say thirty percent of help, we'd get a lot more range. But I don't ride that way. So those higher numbers mean nothing to me when you don't ride that way. You gotta find out what your numbers are the way you ride. Uh, I suggest everybody do that too. Um, you know, one day, ride your bike around until you're starting to exhaust the battery and then of course make sure you're near home <laughs> when you do that since if you don't have a secondary, ba secondary battery you wanna make sure you're near home so in case uh, you do run out of the battery that you can just uh, maybe have a block or two to get home or something like that. But I'll tell you that, you know, if you use the percentage thing on the Magic Cycle Cruiser, at 7%, it was dead already, all right? So don't, don't count on it going to zero. Count on it going to about 7%, and then it'll be too low, the, it, it won't function anymore, it'll just stop working. Okay, I think I know where I am now. I've 
got to get on the other side of this road. Let's see here. Oh, okay. Let's hop off for a second. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a big pothole. Could not correct myself away from that pothole. Saw it coming, so I usually don't sit. I'll stand up a little bit. Get it off your butt. You don't want to uh, take that, that hit. Not great for your rims, though. You, you don't want to hit a pothole, but there, this road is really hacked up for some reason. Okay. Now, I have not turned on the GPS. I'm going on memory. This is uh, typically the way I would head home anyways. I'd head back the same way this way. Some of it was looking familiar, that's why... I uh, readjust my helmet a little bit there. That's why I, uh, I figured I can do it. Follow the thing that says bike route, I believe. Now, anytime I see bike riders ahead of me, I always start wondering, should I pass them? Should I not pass them? I always feel like if I pass them, then I get the sneers of, oh, this guy's passing us and all that. And... But, yeah, there's a lot more people on bikes nowadays, huh? Look at this. See, look at that. Everybody's got bikes. <laughs> yeah, you knew I had to pass them, right? <laughs> had to do it. Couldn't help myself. Yeah. Ride the neighborhoods. Taking it easy, trying to figure out the mileage. Now I could do this on my own, not turn this thing on, not bore you guys with it, but hey, what fun would that be? <laughs> I was riding Bussy, Bussy Woods without you guys for quite a while, and uh, I tell you, it was, it was actually kind of boring. Not having someone to talk to while I'm riding, it was kind of boring. I don't have, a, I don't have music or anything on this bike. It was just me riding. So I'll tell you, I, I have more fun actually talking to you guys while I'm riding than I am just riding without talking or anything. Got hit by a couple of bugs there. Big bugs too, I don't know what they were, but you know, you know when you get hit by something big. <laughs> hit me right in the glasses, twice, two of them. Let's get some water here. Yeah, this year has been the year of bugs. I've been hit by more bugs this year than last year. Yeah, you, you got to keep some type of eye protection on. I know here in Illinois, uh, I believe, I, I don't ride a motorcycle, but I believe from what people have told me, you have to have eye protection on riding a motorcycle, but you're not required to have a helmet on. And that's because I think, um, you know, if things fly up into your eye, if you're temporarily blinded while you're riding, that's not good. Now, if you crash and smash your head, they don't care about that. They don't, they don't want you riding 
while you're temp temporarily blinded and, and crashing into other people. So the helmet law for motorcycles is not in effect in Illinois, but the goggles are. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I would suggest you wear some type of um, eye protection too when you're riding your bike. I, I tell you, even, even with uh, my sunglasses on, and I, I have prescription sunglasses, uh, even with the, the sunglasses on, dust and stuff gets into my eye, goes around it keeps the bugs out of course you know like that big bug if that big bug hit two of them actually that hit me in, in, the, in the glasses um, if I didn't have the glasses that'd be hitting me in the eyeball so yep eye protection is needed but I also wear my helmet I've got the X needle helmet blinking so I've got um, the lights on in the front and the blinking in the back then I've got a blinking uh, tail light, and I've got a blinking front headlight. Yeah, some of the riders said they don't like it, but you know, I I want to be visible, so I turn them on. Nero, one thing that we don't have is we don't have side lights. It's nothing to the side of you. I always I always thought maybe we should. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll watch the uh, the train go by. We've had this happen before. This is the metro train that comes by. This is the train that goes downtown. I'll just get off the bike altogether. So I'm just standing with two feet on the ground now, straddling the Magic Cycle Cruiser. This is why that mid-step is a good thing. You can straddle this and no fears of hitting anything. <laughs> Yeah, they give you a lot of uh, forewarning. Where is this train? I don't see it. Okay, it's coming. It's coming from our left. Let's move up a little bit. Let's see that. Yeah, they're they're moving slow. Let me show you here. It's way off in the distance there. It'll eventually get here. <laughs> yeah, we got cars behind them, behind me, not behind me, next to me. That I figured I'd angle the camera, let you guys see it. I don't know why they're moving so slow. Usually it goes a lot faster than that. Yeah, if they went this slow and tried to get downtown at this speed, they'd never get there. <laughs> this, is, this is the back end of the, of the train. The engines in the back. In position here. Yeah, that's the back end of the train. So they're pushing. They're not dragging. Actually, this is the best way to get downtown. <laughs> There's nobody on this train. Not that I see. So here's the engine part that's pushing it. I don't see an engineer either. So maybe the uh, the caboose section is pulling it? I have no idea. That will stay here. No, not. We're going to go. Yeah, so those type of situations, I'll throttle the whole thing. Get past that as fast as I can. 25.2 miles, 42%. All right, we gotta, gotta pass this.
Yeah, on occasion we run into trains They're heading downtown. You know, no, many people who live up uh, in the north area, best way to get to Wrigley Field, take the train. <laughs> yeah, you take the Skokie Swift. If you're a local person, you know what that is. Take the train. The, the thing literally drops you off like a block from Wrigley Field. <laughs> Riding, you know, driving your car, dealing with parking, dealing with traffic, not worth it. If you're, if you're up north, you're a north sider guy. Park your car at uh, Skokie Swift, jump on the train. <laughs> Transfer over to whatever train it is. I don't remember what line it is. Red line, green line, I have no idea what those things are. Get on the correct one. <laughs> Drops you off a block from Wrigley Field. Can't beat it. Best way to do it. All right. Yeah, this is a quieter ride. We're not talking a whole lot today. You have to enjoy the scenery with me. This would be what a Russ is right video would sound like if uh, I was if I wasn't talking. I'm usually talking all the time. By the way, <laughs> see I can't help but talk. Um, by the way, you know whenever you hear the whining, it's not the motor that you hear whining. It's the tires because these are knobby tires. These Kenda tires on here. I've gotten used to it. I know some people aren't used to that sound, but you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind it, quite frankly. People know I'm coming when they hear it. They hear that little whining that goes on. Kind of like pre-announces me before I even hit them with the bell or anything. Now, if you're trying to keep quiet, of course, uh, that's not the way to do it. If you got street tires, then uh, you wouldn't have it. You wouldn't have that wine. You know, when I was riding a KBO, the commuter bike uh, that has street type tires, couldn't even hear it. It was like so quiet. I wasn't used to it. So what has happened to the KBO bike? You haven't seen it since the review, right? Well, I gave it to my wife. She hadn't ridden it. <laughs> she said she was gonna. She rode it once. She told me that she liked the, uh, the, the original one she had, the Rad Mini Step Through 2. She said that she liked that one better. You know, she told me she, she wanted a larger bike. So a friend of mine came over and um, he was checking out bikes and he, he liked the KBO. And he asked me, he says, uh, are you planning to sell this bike? I go, no. <laughs> I said, I gave it to my wife. He says, well, he says, yeah, if you ever think of selling it, I'll, I'll buy it. So then I started thinking, I says, well, she doesn't ride it. It sits here. It doesn't do anything. As you know, I don't touch the stuff that I give to her. That's, that's hers. So I said, okay. <laughs> I'll sell it to you. <laughs> so yeah, now I gave, I gave the police officer who just passed me a head nod and he waved back. I'm telling you. Makes their day. It really does. I didn't have to even wave. I just had to do the head nod. So yeah, the KBO breeze is gone. I sold it to a friend of mine. The reason I did it too is because I knew that she wasn't going to be riding it. 
much, if, if, if ever. <laughs> She's been riding the other bike and she doesn't even ride that one much at all. I won't be riding it uh, because I know that I have a whole bunch of other review bikes coming in very shortly. Um, you know, we originally thought July and August, but that got pushed back to uh, end of August, early September. <laughs> and then I'm running out of space. I mean, I, I was thinking of selling off the, uh, the Rad Rover 5 because I was running out of space. But I ultimately decided to keep that bike because I don't have too many uh, big 4-inch fat tire, 26-inch wheel bikes. So I says, I gotta hang on to it. Plus, it gives me the distance when I want to go to that uh, Bussy Woods ride because I got the two batteries. So I said, all right, we, we need space. I, I, can't, I can't keep everything. Eventually, some stuff will have to go. And uh, so the KBO went. I feel bad because that is the bike that I actually requested. They didn't come after me. I went after them. I said, maybe, um, maybe I should do a review of this bike. And I really kind of like the bike. But it is a commuter style bike. And as you know, I, my preference typically are these bigger fat tire bikes. So I'm not riding it, she's not riding it, it's just gonna sit. And if I have someone who wants it, and they can use it, I felt it's best to let them have it. And it's not, not like I'll never see it again or anything like that, because it is a friend of mine. So I, I'll always know how well it's doing. And so I said, okay. So I sold him the bike. Gave him a good deal. Didn't have hardly any miles on it. I mean, had only enough miles that I did for the review. A little bit of miles that my wife put on it. That was it. But he really likes it. He, he's taking it all over the place. He's taking it downtown and everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it went to a good home. All right, I think I need to turn here. <laughs> I, th I think last time I made that same mistake and didn't turn. I'm doing this all by memory. And you know how bad my memory is. <laughs> I, I get lost fast. Let's see if I did it right. So yeah, if things come in properly, as, pre as uh, promised, there are four more bikes coming my way. Sometime in end of August, early September, I think, at this point. I think a lot of the uh, projections of uh, delivery times were off by a lot of companies by over a month and something. Sometimes I read the Facebook groups and a lot of people complaining, not just for Magicycle, but for other brands and things that they placed their orders and then they were promised a certain date and didn't make it. Hey, Magicycle is not the only one. I checked the other groups too. A lot of them are in that same, same situation. So um, it's, it's the whole issue, the supply chain, backups at the boat, docks, whatever, customs, everything is backing everything up. It's not just uh, bicycles, but you know, obviously bicycles are affected. And we've already known from the beginning, you place your order, your bike, you're lucky if you get it <laughs> anytime soon. Um, some of them, yeah, if, if they're like right now, if you ordered a Magicycle <clears throat> Cruiser or Cruiser Pro, I think you'd get it right away. I saw a photo of the warehouse and it's got a ton of bikes in there now i don't know if they're all promised to other people already but if they're not this might be the time to order one of those bikes because it's, it's sitting in the warehouse if they can if they can uh supply some out to you you might get one right away that's kind of a rarity <laughs> actually at this point most people wait one two three months to get their bike so anyways, if you decide you want one of those, um, here's how to do it. I'll remind you guys again. 
because I know that Manicycle told me a lot of people order bikes, but I, I don't get credit for it because they didn't order it the way they should have. They may have used the Rust 100 code. I don't get anything for that, okay? The way I get um, a little bit of commission by sending you to Magicycle is you got to use the link that's in the description of my video. You use the link from there, not, not directly to Magicycle. You got to hit the link, and once you're on the link, immediately place the order, okay? Then you use the code. You know, don't go jumping around the site or anything like that. Just use the link to get on it, place the order, and then, um, and then I get uh, a commission for that. Those commission dollars too, by the way, is what keeps this uh, channel going because it, uh, it gives me some funds that I can do what I'm doing. And I try to invest it sometimes in better gear for the bikes and things. You know, like I said, I was gonna look into buying a Panniers. That's where the money would go, <laughs> all right? be buying stuff like that maybe uh, when I need another camera what the, if this camera were to go or the microphones die or something like that that's that's what pays for that stuff and it keeps me alive <laughs> so I appreciate it when you guys use it I'll, I'll tell you one thing the people buy buying rad power bikes thank you very much for that I technically do not have a re business relationship with rad I've said that before in the past it's just a d discount code because I had purchased a Rad bike at one time. Um, let, me, let me turn down here. I had purchased the Rad bike at one time. And um, so they give you a thing that if you share your, your, uh, your experience with your friends by telling them to buy their bikes, they save $50 and you get $50, okay? Well, so many of you guys have purchased Rad bikes using that that code, I appreciate it. It's given me enough money to uh, to get my my wife's bike and uh, and uh, a couple bikes for my sister too. So yeah, that, there's a lot of people doing it. I really appreciate it. So um, yeah, we've 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 had a lot of people buying rad power bikes because of that and. A lot of you guys have done the same thing with the Magicycle. I don't know how we did with the, the KBO. How many? Uh, I don't. I don't hear anything from them. <laughs> I haven't heard anything from them, and um, I don't know how well we did with that. I know at least. I know at least one of two, one or two of you guys at least bought them because uh, I remember reading that saying that you did buy your KBO bike. Hopefully, your bike is doing well for you. Yeah, I like that bike. It's kind of nice. My friend really likes it. <laughs> he's he's making good use of it. I'll tell you the reason why he he decided on that one too in a second here. Let me we'll pass through these people here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I told him when he was riding the bike. That sometimes people will will call you out and tell you you're a cheater and all sorts of stuff when they see um, see an e-bike. And he was he was a little disappointed by that, as we all are. He says, "I don't want to be called a cheater on the bike and all that." So um, he liked the KBO Breeze because he said, "You know that that bike does not even look like an e-bike." I go, "Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, you see the battery, you know, but it's flush. It's flush to the down tube." It could be just a design for all you know, like a like a black stripe on it or something. So uh, he, he really liked it and he needed a step through. So when he wrote it, he said he really liked the fact that it, it rode really well. It was uh, very quiet and everything. Good morning. And uh, it's kind of a... Uh, kind of a stealthy looking bike. You can't tell it's a e-bike at all. So that's why he really liked it. So yeah, he was the best person to give it to. All right, how are we doing here? 30%, 29 miles. All right, you guys recognize this path, right? Yeah, we're back in the general area we always go on. Anyways, I won't keep you guys any longer. Um, 
I'll put a I'll put a little notation here on the uh, on the um, on the video, let you know what we ended up with as far as the final um, mileage. That's what I did last time. I didn't I didn't bring you all the way to the tail end. I mean, you'd just be dragging it out for you. I'll let you know what the the total mileage was. I'm, if I had to guess right now, I'm, I'm gonna guess it's gonna come out the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna guess 42 miles. We're at 29 right now at uh, 30 percent. By the time this thing drops to 7 percent, yeah, it'll be about the same. That's okay. Um, at least I know riding it the way I normally ride it. Um, I can expect it around 40 miles, 40, 42 miles, something like that. And then I got to factor in what the other battery does. Uh, I'll probably do another count on that too, just to make sure. But um, between the two, I'm, I'm going to say between the two, I can get maybe 60. So could I do the Botanic Gardens with it? Yeah, I could, but you know, I was riding very conservatively. I don't like to ride it that way. I like to ride it a little harder. <laughs> And as you know, when I'm on big streets, I will throttle up like crazy. So I think the Rad Rover really is the best choice for that. So anyways, appreciate you guys watching. I'll let you guys know how we do. Talk to you guys next time.